money, money management. What a hard thing for most people in the world. It's a serious issue that ruins relationships, it ruins marriages, it ruins lives. But money is so important in the world. Listen to this. I encourage you as you guys watch my mocasts, I encourage you to just sit back, open a bottle of wine, or while you're cooking dinner, and just listen to what I have to say. But today, money management and business. This is an important one for me. This is something that's hard for people to hear, but it's true. Let me know what you think. What up everybody, Morefield here, signing on to Morefield MoCast. Bringing you latest news, opinions, philosophy, and topics with interesting people from around the world. I hope you find entertainment and challenge your way of thinking. Please visit themorefield.com for links to all social media. What up everybody, Morefield here, once again, Morefield MoCast, day three, October 12th, 2014. Today we're talking about money management, something that's very important to know. Most people do not live like this, uh, and it seems like a lot of people are absolutely foolish when it comes to money. I just had somebody who's been following me for a while, this guy, I've met him for drinks, he was here visiting in Cebu, and he asked me to do an episode on money management, so here we go. It blows my mind how foolish people are, and there's an old saying that goes, people buy things they don't need with money they do not have to impress people they don't know or don't like. That is so true, and it's so important for people to understand this, but pride and ego gets in the way. People want to live better than they can. The deal with saving money is so important, you gotta save at least 10% of everything you make every month. And you gotta live below your means. The lower, the better. If you live way below your means, you will have so much money coming out your ears, you won't even know what to do with it. But now you take that and you be smart with it. So here's the deal. You got to make your money work for itself. And I had a mentor one time. Uh, he was my manager of my music business back in America. His name was Jim. He was an older guy. He was rich. He was very smart, really nice guy. And he owned uh, rental properties. And he also owned an insurance company. And he insured his own companies. And he says, you got to make your money work for itself. So what he did is he bought uh, properties and rented them out. And when you pay off those properties, that's just free money in your pocket. And he said, how do you become rich? I said, I don't know. He goes, you hang out with rich people and you learn from them. And I'm like, of course. So that leads me to my next point. You have to find a mentor. Now, the deal is if you want to approach a celebrity, most people are clouded. They can't think clearly. Oh my God, oh my God, can I take a selfie? Can I take a selfie? Here's how you approach a celebrity or somebody who's super rich. And you can even offer to buy them lunch because everybody's looking for them to buy them things or give them money or whatever. So here's the deal. You find a rich person, a celebrity, whatever. Here's how you close that relationship with them. You say, I would love to meet with you. I'll treat you to coffee or I'll give you money for an hour of your time because I know time is valuable to you and time is precious. I am looking for a mentor. Would you be willing to mentor me? I guarantee you a lot of people who have a lot of money will be open to it and actually give you time for you to learn from them. And you ask, how do I make my own money? And you never take from these people except wisdom. This is very important. You have to find a mentor and you have to channel your money through things like, you know, work your way up to owning properties. I know that's a really uh, big thing for a lot of people. It's really hard to own a property for a lot of people. There's different ways to invest your money. Okay. You've got rental property. As I said, residual income. Okay. Residual income is like, I am a musician. I've written music, a lot of music. I've written so much music. I have music on iTunes and Spotify. That is residual income. Cause every time it's played, I get paid. Every time it's listened to, I get paid or purchased, I get paid. It's not that much money, but you still get paid. As a music producer, see, I can produce artists and I can make deals with them that I get a percentage of everything they make because I'm the producer or I help them write. 
And so you might not make much money with most musicians because it's very hard to become famous. But here's the deal. When you add up a thousand artists that you've been uh, producing, that money adds up. You know, if you get a dollar for one person and you produce a thousand people, that's a thousand dollars. You know, you do the math, you can figure it out. And you know, you have to think about that. How do I make residual income? And here's another trick. Having others do your work equals multiple business. You can get other people's, people to do your work. For example, I went into a guy who was one of my mentors. He was one of the biggest distributors in America for selling merchandise to stores. And I asked him, and this is what I want to do. I want to be a private investigator. What do you suggest I do? How do I go about this? And this was a business thing. It wasn't like how to do it because I already know how to do it. You have to get licenses and work at your way up to the top. And the licenses you have to be to be a private investigator is quite extensive. Uh, it takes quite a bit of time and about 5,000 hours of some type of intelligence work or surveillance. So he said, here's what you do. You find four or five guys that you trust. And you say, hey, why don't you go out and work for me under my license and I'll split the profits with you in half. Splitting profits with people in half is way more than adequate. And when you have, if I have two guys out there working for me full time and I split the profits with them in half, that is like one of me getting paid. And I just sit at home and collect checks in the mail. But if I'm sitting home and collecting checks in the mail from other people working for me, then why not start another business? This is why I say having others do your work equals multiple business, okay? So you have to understand, how do I get other people that I can trust to work hard and not screw me over? You have to give them enough to keep their beak wet and have them interested, okay? And you need to find a mentor to help coach you through these types of things, but you have to have a plan and you have to have goals before you approach somebody you want to be a mentor so when you have goals and you have dreams and you've got a plan, that's when people will start taking you serious. And you have to be persistent. That's the trick to success. You have to be persistent and just pursue the shit out of it. And let people who bash you down tell you you can't do it be fuel for your drive. I've had a lot of people, I've been very fortunate to have a lot of people encourage me. But anytime somebody says I can't do it, I'm like, yeah, fuck you. I can always do it, you know? So here's the deal with any business. See, in the Philippines, you have to understand, because I'm here, there is a lot of people don't have the proper education to run businesses here, obviously, because a lot of businesses here really have no idea what they're doing. People are not trained. People have no idea what they're selling. I'll walk into a store and ask people if they have something, and they say, oh, no, sir, we're out of stock. And then as I'm walking out, I see it right there on the shelf. I'm like, you do have it. They're either lying to me or they have no idea what they're selling. And I've seen that a lot. People have no idea what they're selling. They just have a job and they're, they're trying their best. But it comes with bad training. Now, in any business, if you knock this out, you will be successful. And I guarantee you, if you do this and you master it, you will wipe out all your competition. I used to help people do this in America. It's called branding. There's different kinds of branding. We're gonna tap into this one. For example, perfect, perfect example, one of my really good friends, Dominic from California, his dad owns a restaurant. Now, before I was friends with Dominic, it was one of my favorite restaurants. And then I met the owner's son and I got to eat there for free. I mean, this place is so clean, you can eat off the floor. It's a restaurant. Every single time you go to this place, it's consistent. You walk in, you get greeted within 30 seconds. They sit you down. I mean, it is incredible the timing, how your food comes out. Every time the food is consistent, the people's personality is consistent. Everything is consistent. And here it is. You have to develop a personality brand, okay? No matter what business it is, every business has to have a personality to it. And I'm talking, you gotta make your, your shit clean. Like a lot of these businesses, JR, we were downtown, and they're just dirty. I can understand that because people have really hard time here making themselves successful because the rich and powerful strong arm them and, and rip them off. So you've got a personality brand. You have to master that. How is your personality 
best fit? How do you develop yourself, your business personality, your personal personality? And the other is image. You gotta make your shit clean, just like I said. Image is everything. Image, image, image. I mean, as a film producer, you have to have, as a musician even. When I was a musician, I still am a musician, but as a musician, as a film producer, when you're making films, image is everything. Lighting, lighting is so important. Audio is so important. The quality of your picture, the colors, your editing, everything has to be on point. And everything's gotta look good. And if you make your image brand amazing and it sticks out, like Islands Restaurant, my buddy Dominic's dad's restaurant. Every time you drive by an Islands, you know it's an Islands. You walk in, the seats are all the same. They're very comfortable. There's light bulbs, like colored light bulbs in the bar area. There's a sports bar with many TVs in there. Everything is consistent. And then you've got product. Product has to be consistent and it's gotta be good. And you have to have something that nobody else does. Or you have to have something everybody does have, but you gotta make it a lot better. Like Islands was a place, their, their motto I think it was called, uh, fine burgers and drinks. You go there and oh my God, their burgers were so good. Their Kilauea burger is incredible. I think they have 70 locations in America. But this is a perfect example of how you need to master all levels of branding because Islands is a really, really successful and very popular restaurant. And then the other is service brand. How can you master your service brand? Service is everything. When people are being taken care of and they're being served, people feel good. And with that personality shining through your personality brand, people are gonna be on overload and love to come to your establishment or whatever business you have. You have to be able to have that service, the product, image, and personality. If you master all those levels of branding, you will knock the shit out of anybody competing with you in business. Now there's another type of branding that is very important. First is brand absence. People are unaware of your brand. People don't know you exist. So you have to create the second branding, brand awareness. You have to create awareness so people know that you exist. The third is brand preference. You have to make people taste what you have and appreciate what you have so they have a preference between your brand and somebody else's brand. You have to make them prefer yours. And then the third, is, did I get that? Oh, that, this is the fourth now is brand insistence. People will insist that yours is better and they'll choose your brand instead of the others. And the last one is brand advocacy. If people are advocating for your brand, then you have people working for you for free. So let's say how much, how much uh, what kind of example could we use? Like a deodorant, for example. I used to use Arid, but it's hard to find here in this country. So now I use Old Spice, I think. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Old Spice. If somebody comes into this country and says, oh, I need to buy deodorant and I'm out, I'm gonna say, oh, you gotta buy Old Spice. That's what I use. I know where it's at, I know what store to go to, and I walk them in there, and now I'm an advocate for Old Spice deodorant because that's what I use. So now Old Spice has somebody working for them for free, and I'm not even aware that they're making money from me. That is when you get to that point, you've mastered it. But you have to continue to develop yourself, develop your branding, and continue to grow and change with the times, the life, technology. You have to move forward with society. And there was one thing, when I was younger, I was running out of money, I didn't make money. Well, I did make a lot, but I blew it a lot. And there was a guy named Adrian. He was actually a former NFL player. I think he played for the Patriots back in like 1986. And his wife, he's a big black guy. And, I'm sorry, dark brown, excuse me. Uh, listen to my earlier podcast, I talk about that. And then his wife is a light brown woman. She is six foot six, the largest woman I've ever seen in my life. She played with WNBA. So you got this mixed race 
and really athletic tall people they had kids their kids are beautiful mixed colored blue eyes but kind of like mulatto looking man they were beautiful kids long legs tall but anyway that's beside the point love the family adrian's a great guy and i've spent a lot of time with him he was my financial advisor at one point years ago when i lived in vegas that was a long time ago now but he gave me a piece of paper and i filled out this piece of paper and there were reports like everything there were so many bills and things that i didn't even realize I paid for. And you go down this list and it says like, okay, how much gas do you spend a month? How much money do you spend in entertainment? And I was like, what does that mean? It's like going to the movie theaters, eating out outside your home, uh, doing things like that, buying a pack of gum at the gas station. That is entertainment money. And then you've got gas money. And I think back then I spent about 200 bucks a month in gas, if I can remember right. Okay, and then entertainment, maybe I'll spend 300 like going to the movie theater, eating out. And then utility bills, insurance. I mean, you name it. There was all these things. Boom, 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 boom. And now he's like, here's what you do. You take envelopes and you write down on the envelopes, gas. On the second envelope, you write entertainment. On the third, you write this and that and so on and so forth. So now you've got these envelopes with money set aside for these particular things. And as you, as you go throughout your, your month or paycheck by paycheck, you take money out for these things. And then when you're running out of money, you go, okay, I can't do any more things now, or I have to watch myself. And you, 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 you gotta be very strict and you use the envelope system and you'll be amazed at how, how better off you, that is a start to financial freedom and success using that envelope system. Spread out your investments. Don't put all your investments in the same place. That's very, very important. Another thing, you need to have different savings. Emergency, you have to have an emergency savings for a medical, car issues. If you get a flat tire, you need an oil change, something bad happens, your car breaks down, you need to have an emergency fund. If your girl gets injured and she's got to go to the hospital, you got to have an emergency fund. So save that shit. It's very important. And secondly, you need to have six months worth of income saved in case you lose your job. Okay? Because you have a lifestyle. You've got car bills. You've got things you have to pay for. So you take your money and you save it and put it in another emergency fund. So when you get fired or you lose your job... You say, okay, now I am set for six months. And you, you look for a job, you gotta hurry up because you don't wanna waste that because that's a lot of savings. So if you make 3,000 a month, 4,000, 5,000 US dollars, US dollars. If you make 5,000 US dollars a month, in six months you get how much? 30,000. 30, so you have 30,000 in savings. That is a nice savings right there. And then maybe have, you know, Try to get to 20,000, I know that's a lot, but try to get to 20,000 US in your emergency savings. Just keep saving. Have multiple accounts in different banks. Once you exceed over 50 to 100,000 US dollars, once you exceed that, it's important to have different bank accounts in different banks. And then there are a lot of per perks with banks, like my bank. If you have over 100000 in savings or liquid assets within that bank, then you will be able to have special banking. It's amazing the resources that they give you when you have that kind of money, which seems kind of turned around, like they should be helping out the poor people. But the rich people are the ones that put money in their pockets. Another thing, do not let or use banks that charge service fees. I had a bank account with Wells Fargo back in America and they were charging me. They were charging me $5 a month in service fees. I'm like, $5 is not that much. For one, it adds up. But secondly, that's my money. And they charge me um, $5 a month for a service fee? I'm like, fuck. You motherfucker. I took my money and I said, I, I, I said that, fuck you to the, to the banker. I said, fuck you in the course you wrote in on. I took my money, I closed out my account 
And I went to another bank, which the bank I'm with now, I love them. And I don't want to say who they are because I got to look into this, ask my attorney if there's any security risks. But I love the bank I'm with now. My bank is incredible. There's no service fees. There's no maintenance fees. A maintenance fee for your bank account is fucking bullshit. You don't fucking charge people to store their money in your bank. Because that, that's ripping people off, man. That really pissed me off. Wells Fargo is a horrible bank. I hate Wells Fargo. I've actually had accounts with them twice, and I closed both times. Yeah. The other time, I, helped, I was trying to help a friend out. He just got a job as a banker at Wells Fargo. He's like, hey, would you open an account? I'll get points, my whatever. And I said, sure. And I think that's when, when that happened. And I, I, didn't even put any, I didn't put any money in there. Oh, this is what happened, I think. If I remember right, I didn't put any money in there because I hate them anyway. And then they gave me a maintenance fee, and I, I withdrew uh, got overdrawn in my account, and then they charged me late fee, uh, uh, like not a late fee, but an overdraft fee, which was like thirty bucks. And I'm like, excuse you, I didn't even want to have a bank account with them. I was just trying to help a friend out, and then they charged me a fee. I overdraw, and then oh, Wells Fargo, you guys are fucking morons. I'm so glad I don't bank with you anymore. Always be honest. Always, always be honest, and pay your taxes. When you get in trouble with your taxes, it's over. You can lose shit. Always be honest. You got to be honest. Don't lie. That's in anything in life. Just be honest. If you're honest with people, people will respect you. Even if honesty hurts, if it's hard to say, I always try to be honest. And then here's the last thing for today's podcast. This is very hard for people to understand. People don't get it. Even you, JR, you told me this one time. Now, brace yourself with this. Now, I am gaining nothing from saying this. I believe 100% in God. And I believe in the Bible. I believe I can prove it 100% right. But I will tell you this. The Bible says, God said, give me 10% of everything you make. Now, why does he say this? He does not need your money. God does not need your money. Where does he say, put your money? He says, give me 10% to the storehouse, which means wherever you go to get spiritual growth, if you go to church and you get your spiritual bread and butter at this location, you give your tithes. It's called tithes. A tithes is 10%. An offering is is anything outside of that or beyond 10%. So you give 10%, which is a tithe, you give 10% to God. Money is the last thing people are willing to give to God, but it keeps your spirit in check because it all belongs to God anyway. Your money is not your money, it belongs to God. The car you drive is God's car. And if you live your life with that perspective, God will bless you. And that's what tithing is all about, is keeping your spirit in check and having a good attitude. It all belongs to God anyway. If you don't believe that, you tell God right now, God, you cannot take my money from me. And watch what happens. Now, another thing, this is the only place in the Bible, the only place in the Bible God says to test me. God says, test me. It's the only place in the Bible, test me in this is tithing 10%. He says, I will bless your life far more than you can ever imagine. Now, back when this was written, people had crops, items that they would trade and sell. He said, I will overflow your brim with blessings far more than you can ever imagine. It's the only place in the Bible that says the testament. That is powerful. And you tithe one time, and you'll feel a difference. You'll be like, wow, that is amazing. But you got to make sure you put your money in the right place to God. Don't just give it to a charity. It's where you get your spiritual bread and butter. But it's got to be a heart issue. You got to work on your heart. That is the last thing people are willing to give to God. Please comment and let me know how you feel about this. And please let me know if there is anything you would like me to talk about. Have a great day. Don't forget to visit themorefield.com for links to all social media. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please stay connected. Let's grow old together. This is Morefield signing off. Morefield MoCast. Hope you all doing well. Much love. Peace out. See you,